So here we are with the Rebel Hill rig, all ready to go and be animated. First thing that you'll see with my rigs is of course that they come in various different varieties, such as this very basic biped here, as well as for instance this much more advanced biped. Despite the differences in controls and setups that you have between these characters, you will find that they all pretty much follow the same broad design. So to that extent, once you've gotten on with using one character, you'll be pretty much good to use any of them, as the controls and systems all work in broadly the same way. For the most part, you'll find two rig types types, biped rigs, who use their root centering from the hip here, and quadruped rigs. Since quadrupeds tend to lead with their forelimbs and their chest, the root item for quadrupeds is always in the chest. Though you do also get a secondary root item in the hips position on quads. Furthermore, all rigs have this absolute root base item, or global root, which allows you to position, scale, or whatnot the entire rig as you choose. And this contains all meshes and control items as children of this item. So from those basics, let's take a little more detailed look at some of the overall controllers. First off, you've got your schematic view here where you can quickly and easily pick controllers if you like, but of course you can also pick them in viewport. Things are color coded more or less for ease. Yellow colored items are generally your FK controllers for things, with these dark blue items being your IK controls and goals. These pale blue items that we see dotted about control twists or planes in IK systems, such as character space IK twist or pole vector twist, either or which is of course world space. You can switch between the two, and you can even switch the pole systems off to work within the IK goal space itself, which gives you a twist relative to the IK goal. Eyes can be used in FK mode here, or local mode where the eye is local to the head space. And we've also got world space for the eyes if it's desired, that works like that, all very nice. And in this way, Pretty much all of the control systems in the character rigs can be switched between different modes such as IK, FK, or different spaces, world, local, character, whatnot. The rigs also contain offsets, which allow us to get out of tricky situations such as gimbal lock and the like, and these are available at various points in the rig, on different controllers, usually those that tend to suffer from gimbal, or which will commonly be switched into different spaces. Squash and stretch is also built into all of our rigs as well, working with either IK or FK modes, which is pretty good and seamless. Our squash and stretch also extends to scaling certain parts of our rig, usually the extremities, and that again works seamlessly with all the other systems. And the squash and stretch also extends to simple bend controllers, which you can use either for creating hyperextension or bending in a limb, or of course you can use to correct silhouettes, meaning that the squash and stretch isn't always limited to just your cartoon characters, it can also be handy on your more realistic ones as well, helping you to offset a certain piece just a little bit here or there. There's also a few little correction bones dotted around our rig that we can use to get soft and subtle effects inside of our characters, just for smushing the mesh about a little bit here and there, or for manually correcting trickier shapes like the butt, or in the case of our quadruped, the shoulder blade area. The face systems that we use are pretty straightforward and simple, and pretty much based off of a joystick-style interface, a SEPA style. We can shove that around somewhere in our character space, and basically just by manipulating these joysticks, we get our control over the different aspects of our character's face, and the shaping and expressions that we're after. For additional detail, there's also the shaper joints that exist in the face, which work on top of the morph system, and allow us to just sculpt into our pose a little more in the way of custom shaping, just to refine our poses exactly as we want them. Don't forget they can also be scaled as well, as they can be moved and rotated. It gives you overall a pretty versatile face system out of not that many controls to have to deal with. You'll we'll also find that our character rigs are fully compatible with other Lightwave plugins that are commonly used for character animation. I, for instance, am a big fan of the Timothy Alby PoseWorks plugins that give us pose copying and pasting and so on. I need to easily select all of my controllers, pose copy them. Now I can post it elsewhere or use the mirror paste tool, which lets me easily mirror up my poses in ICE. So, let's take a look at actually using our controllers and what we can do with them, and how they're designed to behave. First of all, not every controller has every kind of channel available for it. If you're here in parent axis mode, which is what's recommended to use most of the time, and you switch between translation, rotation, and scale, some controllers will have different options locked off that you can't use. So if a channel is locked in parent axis mode, the idea is don't use it that way. For instance, here on our elbows, they're only supposed to rotate in heading. But of course, if we were to switch to local axis, that gives us all options, which is of course, undesirable. As we can see, the rig still works, 
rotated in this manner, but it's probably not what you'd normally want. Of course, when it comes to moving things, for instance this IK goal here, if I'm wanting to translate it, then using local axis is fine for that, because of course translation does not suffer from symbol lock or so forth, so the interpolation between keyframes works fine. So you can use your local world or parent axis modes pretty liberally when you're in translate mode. The main problem with using the different modes is, of course, when you get into rotation. Of course, we get the good old gimbal lock problem. Oh, if I get my arm down at the side like this and I'm using a, say, local axis mode at frame 10 here, I, I pull it up to this position. And at frame 20, I would take it back out again like this. And of course, we get this, you know, wave out in between because I've used local axis and everything's going across gimbal lock and causing a bit of a mess. And so this is where we get into talking about the offsets and their specific uses. One of the main uses for offsets is to avoid gimbal. So of course if I bring my arm down at the side and then I bring it up to the front here, okay, I'm in gimbal lock. i just undo that actually, I bring it out to frame 10 here. You can see that I've achieved a nice gimbal lock there. I've got no handle to turn his arm out sideways. Because our interpolation there is working fine. If I wanted to pull the arm out, what I can do is I can switch up to the offset here, which of course now gives me a handle, and I can rotate that out there, making sure of course first to key it back there so it's not slipping around in between. And I offset out, there we get the proper animation that we were after. Working that way does of course leave us with two sets of curves to work on, the offset and the actual main joint itself. At least it gives us nice clean curves that are easy to work with. There's another fun thing that our offset allows us to do. It effectively allows us to switch our rotation order. Of course in Lightwave you know the rotation order runs heading, then pitch, and then bank. Of course we see here that the up-down motion of the arm there is on heading and the forwards-backwards motion is on the pitch. If we wanted to switch that order, we can also do it via the offset. Do is go up to our offset, twist it by 90 degrees in our bank, come back to our main controller there, that back by the opposite amount, so minus 90 degrees, and we can see that what we've got is our pitch is now our up-down, our heading is our forwards-backwards. There we go, rotation order switching is also allowed in the offsets. Obviously you can do this across several frames like a blend, but it's usually probably better to do it on a single frame. Another thing that offsets can give us in various places is a form of animatable pivot. So for instance here I've got the root, and the root item also has an offset because of course the root can spin round in all three axes, it's prone to gimbal. What I can do is I can move for instance my main item here up somewhere, I can go to the offset, bring that back down, of course I've now shifted the rotation point of the root so I can rotate him from here. Nice little set pivot, animatable pivot style effect can also be attained. Same here on the IK goals because the IK goals have their own sets as well of course to allow for bull locking but also of course allow for foot offset like this. In other words, the offsets really are just pivot offsets, but they can be used either rotationally or positionally. Of course, to create a form of layered animation, if you like, using the offset as an additional animation layer. So, of course, if you had some animation going on here on your arm, and maybe you wanted to add a little bit of shake to the arm for whatever reason, maybe the character's afraid or whatnot, then you can have a nice, easy, clean curve to work with on your main controller here at the shoulder, but then you can put a bit of jittering around on the offset. That, of course, carries down the whole chain. It's also a very useful way of working. Perhaps here, the root item. Maybe you're doing some kind of a walk or run. You can keep the root item moving at a constant speed or at a constant level in a constant axis, and you could maybe put the up-down motion and a little bit of bob forward, bob back on the root offset. The offsets let you switch out different pieces of your motion onto different controllers, if you will. giving you a variety of ways to actually use the rig in animation, so there's not any particularly one fixed way of using the controllers. A lot more versatile to fit to your own animation style. The last thing to remember, or should I say really, the one thing you can completely forget about when it comes to using the offsets, is what happens when we're in IK mode. Because when any of our limbs are switched out and into IK mode, selecting the FK offset and rotating it will have absolutely no effect on the hierarchy below it. It essentially gets bypassed. But any other functions that it has for translation, for instance here allowing you to offset your shoulder position ever so slightly, do of course remain, and that plays perfectly well with the entire IK setup.
We'll now take a look at some of the more specific uses of the controllers. And the best place to start is with the IKFK. IKFK switching is a pretty common thing with these rigs. So let's see exactly what's on offer and how it works. First of all, we shall see that an awful lot of our IKFK, though not every single system, allows for snapping. So for instance here I can pose up my limb in FK like this, a little twist there, and I'm also going to rotate my hand. Okay, something like that, that's good. You can see that the IK goal here has followed along. To switch, or to switch with snap, all I do is key the IK goal. I need to skip frame to update to make the twist item here update its rotation. That's the character space twist item. I key that, and then I simply throw the switch. And as we can see, everything has stayed in place, but my arm has now gone into IK control mode. And at this point, attempting any manipulation on the FK will simply do nothing. Going back the other way is pretty much just as simple, so I can pose my limb here into a position using the IK controls, something like that let's say. I then select my FK controllers and key them and then when we switch back into FK again everything stays in place and we are now returned to FK control. So this gives us a direct one-to-one -one match between our IK and FK systems which is very handy and very friendly to work with of course. So that's all good news.